Okay, so the 12 songs for the 12 String Project just became a baker's dozen. The 13th song is Who's Behind the Door, a song by uh, a little band called Zebra. It was on their eponymous first album. And uh, if Zebra is not known for anything else, they should certainly be known for this song. It should be one of the great 12 string songs. One of the irritating things about the song is that it is an alternate tuning. And I have no patience for alternate tuning, so I had to develop a way to uh, play the song using a standard tuning. So I'll have an extended guitar lesson after I present the song to show how to uh, do the song with a uh, standard tuning. Uh, there will also be some vocal performance notes. Uh, Randy Jackson used some nice uh, techniques that uh, I've not explored with the other uh, songs in this project. Uh, the lyrics are very interesting. Uh, to take the lyrics apart, uh, you just have to realize that they're anthropomorphizing the stars. And so, how do the stars think of you? We're animals in their zoo. Here's Who's Behind the Door by Zebra. Watched man 
So as I said in the intro, uh, this song uh, was written and performed by Randy Jackson uh, in an alternate tuning. Uh, so I had to develop a way of playing the song using a standard tuning. But before I get into uh, the pieces of the song and how to do that in a standard tuning, uh, which really isn't all that difficult, there's just a lot of moving parts, uh, let's talk briefly about vocal techniques. <clears throat> uh, most of the song, Randy Jackson sings very lightly. Um, so, uh... Watch us all They're only making sure that we don't trip and fall so he's kind of in a, a, a nice blend between the uh, falsetto and the chest voice and goes more toward the falsetto as he gets toward the higher notes. Uh, he never really digs into the low notes. Uh, and then at certain points of the song, he kind of kicks on the afterburner. And that doesn't take any more power to do. So uh, you've got this section that goes... Um, uh, Think about the stars. Think about what you are. That doesn't take any more power to do that that louder section than it took to do the very soft section all that happened was instead of focusing the the uh the sound through the lower part of my mouth uh for the for the softer section um and watch us all they're only making sure that we don't trip and fall instead of doing that uh, what I've done is I've moved all of the sound up into my sinuses, so I'm really singing through my nose when I go. How do they have the nerve? But basically, that's that's happening somewhere back here. My tongue is kind of redirecting the sound up through my sinuses, and uh, by by simply doing that, I'm not I'm not doing any I'm not str uh, straining anything. I'm not doing anything differently here. I'm not using any more power or any more air. Uh, it's just moving the sound from going through my mouth and going through my nose and there's there, you know, there really isn't any difference in what's happening in the vocal cavity just that uh what's happening where the, where the sound is being produced uh and it's kind of randy jackson's little signature way of uh kicking on the afterburners uh so it's a fun little technique now let's talk about uh how to create the song using an alternate tuning uh and i'm just going to break it down piece by piece uh and then kind of pull the whole thing back together the very first riff. As most of the strings open, the one string that's muted is the, is the low E string. Uh, so on the tenth fret, I'm holding the tenth fret on the A string, and on the and the, on the high E string, and the rest of the strings are open and just kind of ringing. I'm muting the D string just a little bit, at least the. The higher of the double chord strings, the high octave of the double chord strings, the low octave is ringing open. Uh, and then we've got this nice little run. So let me break that down. This is, uh, and for the most part, we're playing these four strings right here, uh, are, are well, these four double chord strings. Um, so we've got the 12th fret on the G string and the 10th fret on the E string. And then we're gonna come down and do the ninth fret on the G string and the eighth fret on the E string. And then we've got this little parallel thing where we're playing the uh, seventh fret on both the G and the E. And then do it again on the A, uh, on the fifth fret on the G and the E. And then uh, on the third fret of the E string, fourth fret of the G string. And then uh, second fret of the E and the G. So here's this thing. Uh, again, we're playing all four of these strings with the D string and the, and the B string ringing open for the most part. So. And then we'll go over and hit, uh, uh, now we're gonna play uh, pretty much the, the middle three strings or middle four strings uh, with the, uh, the third fret on the B string and the fourth fret on the D string. And then an A minor seven which is the first fret on the B and the and the second fret on the D. And then we'll do a roll up. So let's just do that little quick run again. You'll notice that it just strikes uh, all of these on the up on the upstroke. 
uh, just once after the first two after the first two chords. So. So then we've got this this nice little run up, and for the most part, you're going to see this parallel uh, uh, kind of a movement, where you've got the uh, second fret on the A string and the second fret on the B string. So we're we're just going to play those two strings now. If uh, their open strings ring openly, there's that's nothing to worry about. But what we're concentrating on is on is the A and the B strings. So lots of slide ups. So up to three. Up to five, up to seven. Now here's the difference. When we go up to nine, we're going to play the eighth fret on the B string. So that's the only time it's different. And then you're on the tenth fret on the A string and the B string. And then you're back to the tenth fret on the E string for the same open chord again. We're going to do the, thing, the whole thing again. Now I'm going to play that whole section slowly. even more slowly. Okay, now this next section, um, uh, Randy Jackson's actually using chords and I can't do that because I'm not using the alternate tuning that he's using. So to kind of mask that, instead of strumming chords, I'm doing little arpeggiations because uh, I'm masking what I've changed uh, to be able to adapt it to a standard tuning. So those little kind of arpeggiations that I'm doing there aren't in the original recording that Randy Jackson did, um, but I'm having to, to kind of mask the fact that I can't play the chords that he's playing. So uh, here's how I'm creating that effect. So I'm just walking up and I'm, and I'm, I'm doing my arpeggiation just A on the H string, the G string, and the D string, and pretty much just keeping that arpeggi arpeggiation, although I'm following the, the, the melody as I'm, as I'm doing that. So it's the second fret on the A string, then the third fret on the A string, then the open D string, then... I'm sorry, the second fret on the A string, third fret on the A string, second fret on the D string, then down to the open D, then the fourth fret on the D string, then down to the second fret, then the open G, back to the fourth fret on the D string, second fret on the G string, open, and then it ends with fourth fret on the G string, or on the D string rather, open G, second fret on the G string. So here we go, very slowly. Now here I'm going to play some chords, but I'm going to really focus the pick on the G string. Because that's where the melody is. So while I'm uh, hitting all the strings with the strumming pattern, I'm focusing the, the, the downward hits on the G string. So the, the way these chords work is, it's what would be a B, a B flat seven major, uh, but I'm not playing the bar chord there. So I'm just uh, the third fret on the D string, second fret on the G string, third fret on the B string. We're going to take this chord, and then we're going to move it up two frets, and then play a chord that's going to consist of the open strings with the uh, uh, second fret on the D string, so it's kind of an E minor chord there. All right, so let me do that whole little arpeggiation very slowly again.
Now, uh, we'll have this nice little run here that comes next. Now, that's actually in the song pretty much that way. I just have to spell it out a little bit differently than uh, uh, Randy Jackson does uh, because I'm using the standard tuning instead of the alternate tuning. So, uh, we're going to use the 8th fret on the B string and the 7th uh, fret on the, on the E string. So we're going to 7-5-7 seven, seven on the E string. Then we're going to hold the 5th fret on the, on the E string and walk the B string down. So that's going to be on the B string, 8, 7, 5, and then 7 on the G string. And then we're going to have little arpeggiations uh, following the G string down. And then on the D string. So we'll start again with this uh, figure here. So 7-5-7 seven, seven on the E string, 8th fret on the B string. And then on the, keeping the 7th fret on the E string. So it's 8, 7, 5 on the B string, then 7 on the G string. Now we're going to follow the G string down. 5, 4, 3, open. 5, 4, 2, open. And then 4 and 2 on the D string. So it's... Again, in this section where he starts to sing, and it's all that way through the intro before we get to the part that's sung. Um, uh, he's playing chords. I don't have the chords to play because I'm using a standard tuning instead of the alternate tuning. So I'm just playing a single note, and I'm kind of suggesting the chord by letting the uh, bottom three strings open, uh, ring open. So on the D string, I'm on the fourth fret. Slide up to five, down to two, then five to seven. Four, five, two, and, and a lot of that's uh, just sliding, uh, which is what he's using with the chords. So, okay, now I'm going to do that very slowly. Again, just using the D string, uh, fifth, uh, fourth to five. Five to seven, four, five, two. And then uh, we've got the, because they don't know. So what I'm doing to create that is kind of like a C chord, except I'm not playing the bottom part of the bar. So I'm just barring it like I would bar an A chord down here. So that's a C and I'm just making uh, from the sixth fret back to the fifth fret on the B string. down to a B chord, but again, I'm only playing the top part of it. And if the A string and the E string give me a little bit of dissonance, that doesn't bother me at all. It just kind of fattens out the sound. And then it comes to really my favorite passage as far as the guitar part, uh, guitar work goes in this song. Uh, Who opened up the door? So that's a fun little run, um, and it's actually fairly close uh, to the way that it spelled out in the alternate tuning. Um, so we'll go with the uh, seventh fret on the on the A string, and we're going to go eight seven eight on the B string. And just let all the strings ring open except for the the low E down here. Then the fifth fret on the A string. And we're going to go 7-5-7 seven, seven on the B string. And we're going to do the same thing down a, down a whole step. So 3rd fret on the A string, 5-3-5 five, five on, the, on the B string. Then down to the 2nd fret on the A string. And we're going to go 3-2-3 three, three on the B string. And then we have a suspension chord, which looks like an A minor. But if you take your first finger out, you've got this chord. So, let's get back to uh, how that happened. Watch us all. They're only making sure that they don't trip. 
and fall these chords very slowly. I'm going to slow them down even more. The A, 7th uh, fret, 8, 7, 8 on the B. 5th fret on the A, 7, 7, 5, 7 on the B. 3rd fret on the A, 5, 3, 5 on the B. 2nd fret on the A, 3-2-3 three, three on the B. And then the suspension chord. Now, uh, this gets pretty fast and furious uh, in this section as well, but uh, you've already played this stuff, uh, or part of this in the intro. Actually, you've played more than uh, more than this run in the intro. So we're going to use just a piece of the intro, uh, come back to it. So... Find out more. Who the key to this door? So uh, we're, we're taking just a little bit of the intro. So this little section right here. So it's just the uh, uh, 12th fret on the G string and the 10th fret on the E string. And then everything else is, an, is a one hit uh, coming up on the upswing. So that's uh, a 9 on the G string, 8 on the E string. 7 on the G, 7 on the E, 5 on the G, 5 on the E, and then we'll come do this run that we did uh, at the end of the intro. So it'll go uh, from starting on the second fret of the A string, we're going to be parallel with the second fret on the, on the B string as well. Slide up, hit the third fret on the B string, slide up to the fifth fret, hit the fifth fret on the B string. Slide up to the 7th fret on the A string, hit the 7th fret on the B string. Slide up to the 10th fret on the A string, hit the, uh, I'm sorry, the 9th fret on the A string, hit the 8th fret on the B string, and then the 10th fret on both of them. And then we're back to that suspension chord. So I'm going to do that very slowly. And then eventually that'll lead to this chord. How do you think it out? Uh, so this chord is uh, very much like a C chord. If you do a C chord down here, but spell it so that you've got uh, the third fret on the B and E strings. So you're holding a D on the B string and a G on the on the E string. It's just another way of spelling out a, a C chord. Um, just adding a little bit to it. So we're going to take this form and move it up here so that you're playing the uh, uh, sixth fret on the A string, the B string and the E string, and the fifth fret on the D string. And we're going to take this whole form and move it up another two frets. So you're playing the eighth on the A, uh, B, and E strings, and the seventh, or, yeah, the seventh fret on the, G, on the D string. Now that'll get you most of the way through the song. Let me play uh, very slowly where that uh, last chord uh, pattern happens. Okay, now we're ready for the very ending sequence. Uh, where the, the song completely changes its feel. So it's... How much more do you really think you know than a flower does about who's outside the door? So it's actually going to start with a, a simple G chord. I'm adding the D in on the, on the uh, B string. 
then it's like we're playing a B flat, but I'm just playing uh, this part of the B flat. And if I get some dissonance out of the A string and the E string, that doesn't bother me at all. It just adds to the texture. B flat to A, C to B flat. And this is like a B flat up here, but you're just playing th these three notes out of it. And again, if you get some dissonance coming out of the A string and the E string, that's fine. It just adds to the texture. So B flat back to the C. So let me do that again. G, B flat, A, C, B flat, B flat, C. And it's just these three notes out of the B flat. So that'd be the uh, uh, eighth fret on the D string, seventh fret on the G string, sixth fret on the B string. So you're going to go B flat, A, G chord. Uh, and uh, he does this uh, nice little double rallentando where uh, he slows the song down. And it's kind of a fake ending. You think he's over? But just like Mazorski's pictures at an exhibition, he wants to play one more time a whole lot more slowly. G chord. So hopefully that'll give you all the materials you need to uh, to build up, to take apart and build up this song and be able to play it with a standard tuning. I know this has been a very long guitar lesson, uh, but uh, and usually I assume that you already know how to play large sections of the song. But in this case, uh, I think it's worthwhile going into all of the details just simply so that we have a, uh, a solution to be able to play this song with a standard tuning instead of you having to bring an extra 12 string along tuned to some alternate tuning just to do this song. It's a great little song. I hope you've enjoyed my 12 songs for the 12 string series. And uh, uh, in performance, uh, I may drop one of the songs in favor of this song uh, to keep it 12 songs, or if I've got a longer presentation, then I'll add all the, the whole Baker session. Uh, I think next I'll probably uh, start doing a few things for the classical guitar or maybe the harp. I hope that you'll subscribe to this channel and uh, find me at uh, www.robertbrucescott.com.